Hey everybody, welcome to a new video. Today we're going to talk about the mighty Flea, bass player of the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Flea needs no introduction. Musician, actor, bass player and founding member of the Red Hot Chili Peppers. He has also recorded with Alanis Morissette, Johnny Cash and Tom Waits among the others. And performed live with Nirvana in 1993 playing the trumpet. His bass style is unique and iconic and mixes funk, rock and punk music. In 2009, Rolling Stone ranked Flea the second best bass player of all time. Number one was John and Twistle of The Who, by the way. So as you probably imagine, there's already a lot of material about Flea. His gear and his style have been already analyzed countless times. So we're not gonna talk about amps or pedals or slapping technique. Instead, we're gonna focus on the more musical aspects of this incredible player that are often overlooked. Songwriting choices, interaction with his bandmates and his incredible sense of melody. Flea has normally two types of approach to the instrument. The first is the slapping part, used for the heavier grooves, relies on octaves and happens on the lower part of the neck. And the melodic part, that normally utilizes the higher part of the instrument and it's played with a regular finger technique. Flea took a simpler, more melodic path, starting with the Blood Sugar Sex Magic album, where he consciously avoided anything busy or fancy, trying to get small enough to get inside the song, as opposed to stepping out and saying, hey I'm Flea, the bitching bass player. In fact, he hardly slaps at all on the album. Flea went later on to reveal that this type of approach had been inspired by an interview he'd read with Sonic Youth bassist Kim Gordon. Gordon said she loved funk bass but hated the way white guys played, because they turned it into a matcha jock thing and Flea knew he was responsible for that tendency. What a great thing to read. The first thing we're gonna talk about is syncopation. In particular the use of 8th rests in the groove that really helped push the song. On Snow, both the guitar and the vocals play a regular and steady pattern in the verse. To decide that the things that I tried were in my life just to get high on. When See, they play all the time, there are no pauses at all. If also the bass would go with that, we'd have this. But the actual bass part has rests that really define the groove. Not the same thing, right? It's not the notes you play, it's the notes you don't play. The element that really pushes the song is that little silence in between the notes. Number two, the flea box. This is a very simple box that Flea likes to use most of the time, especially in the slapping parts. Root and octave is a kind of mandatory figure in funk music. But Flea also adds the flat 7th. These three notes are the backbone of many of the most famous Chili Pepper bass lines. Can't Stop is a very interesting bass part. The higher note acts like a pedal tone in the beginning and follows, actually almost doubles Anthony Kiddis. The lower notes follow Frusciante's chord changes. But that's not all. The slap and pop figure mimics the kick and snare pattern that Chad Smith is playing. So we can say that the bass kinda embeds all the three other instruments at the same time. It is literally the glue that keeps the sound together. In fact, if you play the bass line alone, you will hear almost an instrumental version of the song. Pretty cool, right? 
Number three, trills. On the guitar, a trill is a series of hammer-ons and pull-offs, generally executed using just the fingers of the fretting hand. As you can imagine, it's not easy to pull it off on a bass guitar due to the size of the strings. I know some people would bitch about it and say it's just a hammer on, but you know what? It's flea. So fuck it, it's a trill. Number 4 10th chords arpeggios. When operating on the higher part of the neck, flea acts like a second guitar, using scales and arpeggios to create intricate harmonies, often using counterpoints to interact with the vocals and the guitar parts. But there is one particular figure he really loves to use 10th chords. A 10th chord is a fancy way to call a chord made of the root and the major or minor third, played one octave higher. It sounds very cool on the bass because you have the deep lower note and a very distinguishable and clear higher note that underlines the minor or major quality of the chord. Flea uses this combination of notes everywhere, playing them separately to create awesome harmonies. The low E string functions as the left hand of the pianist and plays the bass or the chord, while the high G string is the right hand and plays the melody. And this is one of the reasons why Flea's bass line sounds so melodic and thick, he's playing two parts at the same time. And speaking of two parts, check out the verse of Go Robot, it features two very different bass lines played simultaneously. Seriously, can you name another song with two bass lines? Number 5. Follow the vocal melody. Another very cool element is the way Flea follows lead singer Anthony Kiedis for parts of the song, reinforcing the melodic line, such as in the chorus of Hump the Bump. Flea's dad was a jazz trumpeteer and trumpet was the instrument he started on. There is a certain freedom in the way he plays that you can probably trace back to this jazz upbringing and that's where the idea of mimicking the vocal line comes from. Also on the faces of people going by, I see friends shaking hands. Number 6. Follow the guitar. The interplay between Flea and guitar player John Frusciante is also pretty remarkable, though most of the time they run on separate tracks, when they come together it sounds epic. Number 7. The double pop figure. Using octaves when slapping is very common in funky music and slap bass in general. But there is one particular rhythmic figure that Flea likes to use and that we find in a lot of songs. Number 8. Play a root on chord changes. Though Flea's lines are very busy, melodic and often contrapuntal, like any good funky bass player, he tends to hit root on the chord changes to keep the melody glued to the rhythm. Flea uses the pentatonic scale a lot, along with the major and minor scale, which feature heavily in Red Hot Chili Peppers songs. But like any good jazz player, he doesn't dislike throwing in some exotic note here and there, for example the Phrygian dominant scale on the main riff of Sir Psycho Sexy. Or the good old Triton in the intro of Charlie. There's so much more to be discovered about Flea's style, 
Pretty much every Chili Pepper song has a remarkable bass line and the melodic variety is astonishing, so I strongly recommend you go on and do your own research. There's too many good bass lines to even count, so don't get upset if I did name your favorite Flea song. Seriously, can you name one single song by Red Hot Chili Peppers that does not have an awesome bass line? I can't. Especially on the melodic parts, the combination of notes and rests really creates the backbone for the Chili Peppers, and his playing just on top of the beat propels the music forward and gives it an energetic feel, making him the real engine of this fantastic band. And though countless articles and videos are already out there, I felt that no one of them does justice to his incredible melodic versatility, and I wanted to give my take on it. By the way, if you're a fan of Red Hot Chili Peppers and want to support this channel, check the latest video of my band, and if you like it, leave a comment, as it really helps the algorithm pushing it. So I hope you liked the video. Thank you very much for watching, please subscribe to the channel, leave us a thumb up, and don't forget to follow me on Instagram.